You guys know Christy Dodds? Yeah. I'm yeah. Ryan McCarthy. Christy is going to kick us off, and then it's Christina Wagner. She's organized like 90% of this. So. She's fantastic. Yeah. Well, I, I'll pray in a minute, by the way. Good morning. I'm so glad to have you guys here this morning. You um, are making it through Thrive this fall, <laughs> and um, it's been a privilege and a blessing to walk alongside you guys and kind of get to um, know you a little bit as you've walked with your mentees. Y'all are unbelievable. Um, you should be around working through your second assessment or second <coughs> pair of assessments, and um, I'm hoping that that is good time for you with your mentee. I've really been praying that they would just experience that freedom the Lord offers and that they would see the beauty of bringing things into the light because that is where um, true life is definitely found. And, um, and it's been just such a blessing to hear you guys, your takeaways from your time with your mentees. It's wonderful and a real blessing to me, um, and I'm grateful for that. So I would just encourage you to uh, press on and stay the course. We have um, a few weeks left, and if you've done Thrive before, you know that those last weeks are rich and sweet. And if you haven't, the last weeks are rich <laughs> and sweet. And um, it is such a joy, especially if your mentee is walking through a really dark place as she or he works through the assessments. Those end weeks just um, really shine a beautiful light on how the Lord um, wants us to walk in joy. And um, I'm excited to see where your mentees land with all of that. As always, if you need anything, um, please don't hesitate to reach out. It is my privilege to get to talk to you, and it's been such a blessing to get to know some of you better, um, and I'm grateful for that, and I'm also grateful for Ryan, who is going to walk you through the rest of the mentor process today. Thanks. Um, I, uh, well, let me pray, and then I'll jump in. Father, thank you so much for bringing us together. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, just get a sense of where we've been, but really also I, I pray for clarity uh, for where we're going, and I thank you in advance for the wonderful things you're going to be doing in our mentees' lives. Um, but Lord, also thank you for the things you're doing in our lives, the things that you're teaching us and convicting us with and opening our eyes to. And I just, uh, this just occurs to me, I thank you for uh, what's being taught in the pulpit right now with the series through Revelation and how personally convicting that has been as well. And with the, all this uh, that, uh, that you are doing around us. My prayer is that you would uh, change us and change our mentees, uh, change our hearts and allow us to become more Christ-like as a result of this. And uh, may this be an instrument of bringing you know, a revival of sorts in, in, in our lives. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So Chuck had the great idea of, of finding a smaller room to do this in. <laughs> I think we can, we can work that out. Normally, we do this training next week. But I have jury duty next week. So that's why we're doing it this week. So it's. So I've been called for jury duty maybe four times, and I've never made it past the waiting room. And it could be my Make America Great Again hat or something. No, I'm kidding. I don't have a hat. Okay. So I'm going to walk us through a PowerPoint. <clears throat> You're going to be tempted to write everything down that you see. Uh, we will be emailing you the PowerPoint, and we're also putting the, the, all this content. We're recording it, we're doing an audio, we're doing a video, and we're putting it all on the PathRight thing that you've been invited to. Uh, if you haven't yet taken advantage of that, there's, there's more materials being made available to you this time around than ever has been done. Um, so, uh, just know that we are going to give you this content, but still... There's a lot I'm going to run through. It's going to be drinking from a fire hose. I will get confused while teaching you at some point. I guarantee it. it just forewarning. So here we are. This is October. It is Today is October 14th. And um, we should be uh, reviewing this week assess the, the assessments for sexual immorality and guilt and shame. And that's what's coming up next week. That's, uh, one more assessment. And a lot of the content we're going to be talking about is this, this week. It's like week eight in the, in the steps books, uh, and then there's a fall break coming up. Uh, anything you would add to that? Okay. Your Christi calendar has changed from what you were given the first week of training. This calendar has changed. 
Yeah, yeah. speak into that mic. Speak, mm -hmm. If you can, speak into that mic whenever you do so I don't have to repeat you. Um, that's good. This calendar has changed. This part? Actually, it's, I think it's, a, um, it's November 8th through the 14th. November 8th through the 14th? So basically, the original, in, in, your, in your mentor training guide, there's a calendar. Mm -hmm. um, and we had the week eight going deeper on the first part of week eight, which was the week before. Um, but we've moved it to the end. There's enough things to go through that you may not even get to that, and that's okay. So we put it on the end of the second week of going through week eight materials. Um, so it's just a bonus. There's also a week in between that fall break. So you can choose to go through the growing deeper that week if, if you don't want to take a break. Yeah. And I, just for, if, you, if, you, if you've never been through Thrive, there, you, you find a groove, right? You're going through weeks one through four. You're going through these going deeper questions. It's pretty easy. Then you start the assessments. You're shifting gears. Like, oh, this is different. You start to find a groove with the assessments. Three times week eight happens, and it's like the, there's so much material in week eight, and it's almost impossible to cover it all. It's rich, and the, the real work of change is beginning to happen, but we've basically made amendments and adjustments each time around, and now week eight is spread out over two weeks with a fall break in there. So we're trying to squeeze all the juice out of it because otherwise, it's like you're literally sprinting through the greatest museum ever, you know? The other change is here at the last two weeks here. Um, we realized that the participants are getting to take a break from their groups the week of Thanksgiving, but we didn't give the mentors and mentees a break. So what we want to do is make it more flexible for y'all. If you want to combine these two weeks, that's great. Um, <coughs> If you want to meet two times, you know, two weeks in a row, that's great too. If you're not going out of town and you just really want to meet, that's great. Um, but we just want to give you the flexibility to know that these two weeks can be combined at any point um, yeah. in the in the process. There. What my I always feel is this is always kind of confusing to me from a distance, but when it gets closer, it gets a little clearer. So, but if you have questions, again, reach out. Okay, um, on this is a mark your calendar moment. December 5th, we are having the Thrive Celebration. Who here has been to a Thrive Celebration? In the past? Okay. This is, you don't want to miss this. This is uh, a, a, the last week for all your participants, for all the mentees. And they will be having the first part of the night. They, they uh, do their group time, and there's a small teaching. But then they come to the chapel at the end, and um, there's a period of time of worship, a, a time of sharing what God has done in their lives, the strongholds that have been broken, different things like that. There's an opportunity for the mentors to share as well. Nobody, We're not calling on anybody. But just the most important thing is being there, supporting your mentees, sitting with them, celebrating with them. So if you can mark your calendars for December 5th. <coughs> My throat's bugging me. Hold on a second. I don't want to record this. <coughs> hmm. It's allergies. I'm not sick. Okay, um, this is Pathright. Uh, if you haven't yet used this, we've sent in, uh, an, an, an invite, but there's all sorts of great material on there. Um, I want to ask, who's using it? I'm not going to ask who's not using it. All right, well, we've got a few of us. Okay, just well, it's, it's, it's there. there. So you mentioned that in your first meeting, I just mm -hmm. came over my head, so I signed up for it, but just glance at it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be particularly helpful whenever you feel confused or uh, am I ready for this, you can go to Pathright and find, you know, more than enough information, right? Uh, all those videos that I'm sending out, they're, they're, are, they are there. They're also on YouTube. Um, okay. Uh, here's an overview of the assessment process. Phases one and two what is what you are currently doing in going through the assessments. The first three weeks of assessments are phases one and two. You're examining the fruit coming out of your mentee. What's, what is, uh, what are they, what, this is probably what brought them to thrive. I'm struggling with this addiction. I'm struggling with this that's coming out of me. And they are taking a look, they are conf and they are opening up about it and confessing and praying about it. That's, that's phase, phases one and two. Phases three and four 
our, where we're going to be going. <coughs> it's really covered in week eight, uh, that we're exposing the roots. What, what's going on underneath the surface? Maybe they're already getting a sense of what's going on underneath the surface, but my, I suspect that you probably know more about what's going on underneath, underneath the surface than they do. And we're trying to then replant and renounce those ways. We're trying to, that's, where the, that's the heart of change is happening. And then phase five, when you have a changed heart, when, when, when things have changed, what does it look like to faithfully respond and live out, out of a changed heart? And that's weeks nine through 12. This is supposed to be quick, but I'll keep going then. Okay, so uh, just a review of the assessments. This is where you are currently. The mentees, and I'm sorry you can't really see the light blue boxes on here. I can see them on my screen. But, um, yeah, the mentees have been filling out the light blue boxes, but you know that they don't touch the dark blue boxes, right? Yeah. Okay. And then you are trying to take good notes, and that's what this page is. Like, page 49, my head was blocking it. But uh, are you guys do, trying to do that, writing out lies and vows that they're making and areas that need healing? I have a hard time with this part. All right, so don't feel like, oh, I'm really lagging if, if you don't do that. I, I, I process it more, and I take notes usually on, I actually do it on, I hope I'm not can, you know, making things messy by saying this, but I use the, uh, the, the sheet that they're using, and I make my notes there. But, uh, it, but if, you, if you think this way, this is a helpful tool. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And so, I, you know, I'm not a doctor, you know, I'm not a music boy or whatever. I don't know what the, and you're the closest person to Rick, and I know him pretty well. Yeah. So it's still a little odd. Yeah. I, I take almost no notes. I agree with you yeah, while I, they're I, doing I, it. I just remember a few key things that I might forget. I just check to see if they are closing their eyes when they pray, and I take my notes then while they're praying. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. <laughs> I, it, what what could be helpful is um, right when you're done meeting, using this section afterwards to, to jot down some things. You will remember things right then that you will will not remember six days later when you remember. Oh, I probably ought to go back and take notes. It's just amazing how much falls out the sides, you know. <clears throat> Phase three: exposing roots. This is what's to be done before October 25th, before week eight, if you will. And um, so preparing for your meeting, you want to give yourself an hour to prepare for week eight. And these are the things listed at, that they aren't written anywhere on your notes, but we're sending you these notes, correct? Uh, you want to pray. Pray and ask the Lord to show you where and how you want to speak into the mentee's life. Um, Review your assessment listening notes. So be familiar. You at, at this point, between weeks seven and eight, you have heard them really confess and work and pray through everything that that uh, that they have an oppor opportunity to share. I mean, there might be other things, but that's it's pretty comprehensive. The six different assessments. So you want to review your listening notes. Look over the redemptive views and your mentor guides. Uh, that's pages seventy six through eighty one. Those are going to help you see clearly what does a redeemed view of this look like. They give you, a, a lot of us are clearer about what's wrong than what it should look like. So the redemptive views give us clarity of where is Christ taking us in this, or where does he intend to take us. <coughs> Ask the Lord to reveal specific areas where your mentee may not understand biblical truths. Um, how many of you have a particular, well, I don't have time to go into this, but how many of you have a particularly uh, well-educated, biblically educated mentee? Like, my guy's got his THM from seminary, and it's, what's that? Yeah, I mean, okay, it's, but it, it can be hard. You think, I know less than this guy, you know? Uh, it, let me assure you, though, the gap between here and here Seminary can't bridge that. Knowing all, memorizing verses, I mean, it helps, but there is a there is a gap that it's not necessarily intellectual. It is a, there's a heart blockage, if you will, and so we're not. We're, this is not an intellectual thing, as much as is just asking the Lord to reveal where are they stuck and uh, where do they need to understand biblical truths at a heart level. 
Five, review the list of character defects, uh, the sinful patterns of relating to God and others. Uh, that's page 108. There's a lot of them. But you'll see some things you might want to circle or just put stars next to things that you, you see. And then review the prayer prompts at the end of each assessment, asking the Lord to reveal what your mentee is struggling to believe. There are times where it's waterworks. They're praying, they're praying through those prayers, and it's just beautiful because the Holy Spirit is working. With my experience this time around, I can see moments where it's like, oh, he's, he was moved by that, but I can tell he didn't get it. Yeah. He didn't get that. He, he just read through that part. Yeah. And so it's just asking the Lord, highlight. Where do I need to highlight? And so, anything you would add to that? Yeah. It's all preparation. <clears throat> okay, so, and keep in mind, like, so far, you're kind of trucking, you're trucking along, thinking, I got weeks six, seven, and eight figured out, largely. Week eight is different, and this is, that's great preparation. Now, beginning October 25th, or that week that you meet for week eight, um, we are now into exposing roots, and um, this is simply an orientation slide right now. We will revisit this, but these are the things we want them to, the, to discover, uh, to, ex, to expose the roots of what's coming out of them. Those roots can be defined as either spiritual adultery, idolatry, or pride. They're probably all, you know, a combination of those things. So we will touch on this again in a few minutes, but spiritual adultery is going to the world or people for only what God can provide. Idolatry is elevating even good God-given desires to ultimate importance. So having a disordered love, like I, uh, you make a good thing an ultimate thing. Pride is attempting to live independent of God and gratifying fleshly desires. Okay, so um, uh, what's the? That's in your. Is this in your? That's in the men, uh, the mentor guide. But just so you know that the mentee does not have this in their guide. So it just says who and the cause and what happened, but they have no idea what the spiritual um, yeah. behind the scenes, uh, what they're actually telling you. So this is just for you to be wiser than they are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so everything and is being exposed at, at a fruit level. What were you trying to do now? Thinking back to Luke six, no good tree can bear bad fruit. No bad tree can bear good fruit. You know so. <laughs> We, how do we, we're seeing the fruit. How do we get down to the roots? And so, again, this is just, we, we've talked about this already, but they've been confessing this stuff. How are we going to get down here? Because either your heart is rooted in, um, yeah, here we go. It, it's either rooted in the world or it's rooted in Christ, in the things of the Spirit. So, week eight, we're working our way down. So far, we're all on the same page, right? So... This is a very important slide. Uh, clarifying responsibilities. It, uh, Psalm 51 verse 4 comes to my mind. When David is caught red-handed in his sin with Bathsheba, Nathan the prophet comes and confronts him, and he, he says, you're the man, you're the, you're the one who's guilty. And then we get to listen in on David's confession in Psalm 51. That's listening in. What a privilege. We get to listen in on that. Greatest man, man after God's own heart, falling to a farther depth than hopefully I would ever fall. I hopefully don't commit adultery and kill someone to cover it up. I mean, it's pretty bad. Um, and we get to listen in on the, you know, like it covers really everybody between, right? I'm, I'm not that great, and I haven't done that. So I, I, I don't have to disqualify myself and say, well, this applied to David, but not to me. Okay, so... With that, I think one of the peak verses in that is verse 4, when he says, Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. David takes full ownership over his, responsibility, his fault, his responsibility. We want to clarify responsibility, but sometimes this is like a, um, um, oh, what's the word? We're calibrating the conscience here because you don't want them feeling like, horrible and guilty over things that they don't need to feel bad about. You know, so sometimes your mentee could feel horrible for eating a piece of pizza. You know, that's not sinful or horrible because of something that was done to them. That's not the problem. But then they don't feel bad about stuff that they've done. 
And so we're trying to clarify responsibilities and two sides of that is renouncing lies that sinful, action, that sinful actions committed against the mentee are their fault. So we want them to not take fault for what wasn't their fault. And then the mentee takes responsibility for the things coming from their own heart. It's important that we go in that order, especially in the abuse assessment. There, but we'll get to that in a sec. Some additional notes. This is where you're leading your mentee through the dark blue columns on two, and two or three assessments. You won't be able to go through all of them. Okay, and I also, another thing, um, for some of you, there will be no need to go through some of them because they just, uh, but if they have a lot of stuff on all of them, I would say pick maximum two or three to, to cover because you just won't get through all of this. And it's better for them to experience a successful process in one area than to go shallow in a bunch in general. Okay. Um, so start with the anger and resentment assessment and then proceed through the, through the other most important impactful ones. Abuse should be saved for last. Questions or comments? Okay. Um, under clarifying responsibilities, you want to lead, what page are these questions on? Um, the, the, okay, so this right here is on page 73 in, the, in your mentor guide. It's also, though, in your, men, the, 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 the mentor guide? What about the, the I don't believe it's in the, the mentor. It's in the steps? It's, it's very shortened and abbreviated. This is a, this is much, um, much more meaty in the mentee, I mean the mentor guide. Okay, so what you're going to do, you're in the anger area, and you are going to read these questions. Like, does my response, uh, does your response to your, the way your, your mom's treatment of you and your anger toward her, th does it stem from the, how, some, how she affected you, being self-centered, or from a concern for another person's relationship with the Lord? Do you have a God-centered or a self-centered response? Hint, what part of self is threatened or seeking satisfaction? So you're trying to just ask them, did the way you respond to that, was it self-centered or was it God-centered? Uh, what do you think the answer is going to be? Self-centered. I, I, I've done this many times. Every one of these questions gets a check. All right? They don't know that at first, but you want them to check in their book in the dark blue box of self-centered. Okay? And then... What about self-seeking? Am I more concerned with getting something I have set my sight? So you get the idea. So we read through these questions. They are seen, well, that's what I did. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil. I, so this is baby stepping their way through taking responsibility. Is that well put? Yes. Would you agree? Okay. Yes. And so, focusing on only what they can focus on to change. Yes. Which is themselves. Right. Yeah. Okay, because here's the thing. We're all sinned against. That's the commonality. Like, Jesus was sinned against. Why did spiritual, why did, you know, love, joy, peace, patience, why did the disciples respond that way to being sinned against in worse ways than me? And I could just have the smallest defense. Like, Brandy didn't, she, she criticized the way I loaded the dishwasher. How dare her, you know? And, you know, it could be something relatively small and ugliness comes out of me. And then somebody else is, you know, forgiving because, you know, of the horrible things. That's what we're trying to help people to see. And so their, their assessment might look something like this. Um, they don't have these checks yet, but you're going through and asking these questions, and it's just, it's going to eventually look like this. And they'll get the idea, and pretty soon it'll be, yeah, check, check, check. I mean, you're not going to try to go through every question for every single thing. Rachel, it looks like you have a question. Because I wanted to ask for examples, so why don't you give examples? Sorry. So we're in the examples. So here, you know, he's mad about Mr. Brown, who flirts with his wife, right? And the way he responded wasn't concerned about Mr. Brown's relationship with the Lord or his wife. It's like, I don't like what it does to me. It doesn't, um, and he works, he works through all of these things. Well, pretty soon you're seeing that God has nothing to do with this. This is all me act. And, and to, to can make the connection, I've been in the flesh with regard to this. Um, what's coming out of me is pride. I'm attempting to live independent of God. Of, you know, gratifying fleshly desires. I, this is it's about me. I'm doing it in my strength. Spiritual adul adultery is going to the world of people for only what for what only God can provide. I want a sense of security from the way my wife. I, I know every move that she's making. All this other stuff. I'm making this up, but 
do you see, so do you see that we're trying to uncover, expose the roots of worldliness and spiritual adultery and all that? Ashton, I'm curious, but did you have a, you looked like you had a I realization. I just said that's probably a real situation, you know. That might be. Yeah, that was my, this is my assessment. Um, okay, I wasn't trying to say that. But no, 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 no. I, I bet you it's made up. Um, okay, so helpful? So we're, for the abuse assessment, here's a special consideration. You want to do it last. Very, very important. Uh, I would love to make this a discussion and say why. Why do you think that is? Um, but we don't have time for that. So, yeah, I'll just tell you. If you get to what is your responsibility when it comes to abuse, what are they going to walk away hearing? This was your fault. This is your responsibility. And they need to see the pattern, right? I mean, things have been done to us that made us angry and resentful. Okay, that happened to me, but my response is my responsibility. Things have happened to me that, you know, make me, I, I, that I, have tempted me, and, and my sexual morality is response. Like, that's, I gotta confess and deal with that. Fear and shame, there's, there's, there's these, there's a pattern here that certain things are, you know, not my fault, and then there's other things that are. So you get to abuse. It's no different with abuse, it's just more sensitive. So with abuse, regarding guilt, renounce the lie that I'm responsible for this abuse. You do that first. Highlight it first. Someone was, you know, sexually uh, abused. Okay, that, that is not their fault. I mean, how, how clear, you got to be prayerfully clear and, um, but how do they respond to that? How, what, did they go to God with that sense of violation? Did they go to God with, with their shame? No, they probably didn't. And so you, you then go through this very sensitively. But hopefully if it's at the end and you go through all that other stuff first so that they see that they don't have to be a perpetual victim and they can go to God with, with their pain, with their suffering. Anything you'd add to that? Okay. So, where are we? I can re-examine what part of self is threatened. Now we're moving from, um, this is, the, is this the same stuff that they just went through? Let me look. No, Spells. we're moving back to the light blue columns that they did in their assessment process. Okay. The light blue columns, yeah, that are just to the left of your dark blue columns, they have gone through, and, and when they confess, they like, what part of myself was threatened? Okay, well, so when you go through that, um, have them take a look. Do you see certain themes? So I just went through and added some check marks. Do you see a, a theme in this one? Self-esteem. This person is, is pretty self-esteem focused. And what you tend to find is certain things, parts of self, are generally more threatened. For some people, financial security might not ever come up. Or maybe sexual, it, it, what, that part it comes up a lot, or ambitions. But wh why do you think we're trying to figure this out? We're zooming in on this. We're seeing what part, I mean, like what, does it, is it say idolatry later? Yeah, it, that's there, th this is an area of idolatry. We looked at spiritual adultery, pride, that's going to be uh, that's going to be the place of their idolatry. So, discovering themes and patterns of idolatry, you um, uh, what page is this? Is page seventy four in your mentor guide? When you see those themes kind of rising to the surface, read that. Uh, do you, would you suggest reading that to your mentee? Yes. yes. Yeah. And you don't so, have to read them all, but when you see a theme. Yeah. So read this guy's self esteem one, you go and okay, read this, and they don't have that, right? Or right. do they? Okay. Right. God has given us a good desire for dignity, worth, and value. However, because of sin, and you go through it and you read that to them. So you're giving them, you're, you're exposing roots, but giving them a clear vision of what it's supposed to be like. And you can ask questions. Just interact with them. Do, do you agree with this description? It probably would be helpful for them to see a copy of that, but um, that's not the best time to bring it up. <laughs> Um, how do you see this playing out? Is this difficult to talk about or accept? So you, they're just talking about their, their idolatry at this point. 
a lot of people jump the gun and go straight to idolatry, and they'll say they'll call out idolatry and other people, and that's kind of um, uh, invasive, and and it's it puts up people's defenses. But by this point in the process, we've baby stepped our way to this point. Okay, so still in exposing roots, we've gone through. You know, we're getting toward the end of week eight. Week 8A. We divided week 8 into two weeks. So you're getting to the end of week 8. Keep in mind, when we go through week 8B, all of that was originally in one week. It's insane. So uh, you have copies of this, creating an action plan. Um, the purpose of this is to give them a structure or a format to help them develop a plan to turn from a specific sin and walk in freedom in Christ. I would say pick one or two. I, well, yeah, help the, the mentee identify at least one topic or struggle for their action plan. Don't choose abuse. So if, if your mentee struggles with, um, give me an example, I'm blank. Relationship with their in-laws. Relationship with their in-laws, good. <laughs> Resentment. Okay, so that's their action plan. If it's an addiction of sorts, have them pick one thing. This will be their homework for going to week 8B. They'll complete it and bring it back after fall break to discuss with you during week 10. Is that right? Right. So it's not for week 8B. It's for... It is. Okay. Okay, good. For their week 10. Okay, that's where it gets that's confusing. That's where it gets confusing. Any references to weeks <coughs> is confusing because the mentor is on a different week than the participant. And so we're looking to clear that up. We're working on it. So they will get an action plan to do for their homework in class before we meet with them? You will give that to them. Give you to will them. be the first person that introduces this. You will give that to them, and we gave you an extra so you can do one yourself if you'd like. So you, you have, have you have three copies, is that correct? Three copies. Two for them, one for you. So just um, you'll be introducing it. Sometimes it's helpful if you can say, I did one myself. This was really helpful for me. Because they don't know what they're doing yet. But basically, this is the culmination of the whole program and giving them something to take away so that they know, here's kind of what I learned in Thrive, and here's what I'm going to take away from the program. Yeah. Christina, to be clear, <coughs> I'm, I'm a little slow. So uh, we do the dark blue thing, and then after we do the two or three dark blue things, we hand them this and say, we'll see you next week. Well, and you also, after the or dark. The, or the break or whatever it is. Yeah. And um, and then you're going to move on to the worksheet. Okay. The worksheet is an introduction. You're telling them what it is. You're telling mm -hmm. them the purpose. And you're going to maybe tell them that you did one, um, how helpful it is. They're going to be like, what? I don't know what all this is. And you're going to say, calm down. We're going to figure one out together. Sit down. Here's a couple of suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Because <laughs> they do kind of panic like, I mean, I've had a mentor at this paper for two weeks and didn't even tell me she didn't do it. So, um, But basically, they have to um, fill this out, bring it back to you, you're going to discuss it, and then they're going to bring it to their group and they're going to discuss it in their group. Okay. So Thank it's you. really integrated into the program. This is yeah. not part of the steps material, but um, we feel like it was a way to kind of make things click and have a take. Um, we ask that you do the creating an action plan yourself. Like you take that one extra copy and do, go through it yourself. It would be I, I would highly encourage picking something um, tangible and something that you could share and be vulnerable. You know, as you because they're sharing with you, they're being they're they're getting naked a lot before you, right? So you can you can extend that back. Uh, I learned something really good from Julie um, that when you sense a lot of shame, that's a good time to say me too and, and to, sh you know, to 
to extend that gift of being vulnerable as well. You don't always have to say me too, even if you, there is a me too aspect, because if they're just able to, to just share and, and confess, that's great. But when it comes to creating an action plan and you're going back and say, all right, let's start all over with a, in a simpler format and let's try this. So you do it with them. And so if you find that like, okay, what, uh, this, this is a pretty vulnerable thing to be going through. Well, well good. I mean, they've been, they've been going through it a whole lot. It doesn't disqualify you and everything. It could be, though, something tangible. Like, if I were to do it, I would do, um, why do I waste so much time playing games on my phone? I just, it's like, I can tell there's a, there's a little addict in there, in me. And I just tend to just always want to go back to this, you know, and just turn my mind off and do that. So I probably need to create an action plan for that. Um, good thing I don't struggle with anything else. <laughs> Good. Anything. Uh, looking back at that tree, that the right side uh, picture of the two trees. Mm -hmm. Any of those things. Any things that come up on the. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, have I covered this slide? Mm -hmm. This is beginning November eighth. So this is eight B. Yes, eight B. Okay. So we're still going through their material eight, week eight, uh, but this is the second week. So this is after fall break, beginning November eighth. You, so you want to review what they've done um, with their action plan. Okay, that's, that's the beginning. Help them to fill out any sections that they struggled with. There's a good chance that they're going to be confused. It's funny how much clearer you can see sometimes into their lives that they've been opening up this much that they still can't see. So you're helping them to fill out. Um, yeah, ask them to read it out loud together with you and discuss it. I'm going in the wrong order in this. Okay, keep going here. Phase four, still replacing the truth and renouncing lies. Going through redemptive views. Now, um, this is not in their notes as well. No, but they, <coughs> excuse me, they will receive a copy of this um, I'm, during week eight. So they get this in their group. This will be distributed to them, so they'll have some time to peruse over it. Um, probably about the same time you're talking about to talk about it with them. So... Um, this will be a good time to cover one or two of these with them. Okay. Yes, so um, a lot of great truth to camp out on, but that's pages 76 through 81 in your mentor guide. Focus on two or three that, they, that you feel are most important. You're not going to be able to get through all of it. And then also, uh, my brain's starting to stop right now. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, you're going to have some questions, uh, especially on that worksheet. What is a lie? Lies are hard to discern sometimes. I think um, having someone walk with you through what is a lie um, versus what is the truth, what does God's word say, um, is helpful, especially if this is your first time to ever be introduced to, I've been believing lies, and that has shaped my behavior. Um, so... This is just an extra handout. Um, I think you all have one. They don't have this. Um, so this is just a tool you can use with them if they feel stuck in the lies and truth part. It's just an extra tool. So is it feasible that you don't even go into this? You could, yeah. If, they're, but if it's all clicking. If you're spotting a lie, that you know, I, an example, I, uh, I, always, I always need to need to be in control I need to I can't I, I, I can't mess up on this you find you, you you find that area these are just examples though mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and so they're kind of showing you what's the lie what's the truth what and the character defects it's hard to read this but um, yeah when we get there reach out to us because I mean I'm feeling confused at this point but like I said this is the pattern as you get closer and the steps right in front of you it makes more sense okay so for me um to drive my um, one of my character defects or the ways that I um, behave sinfully to life was um, that I wanted to control things. So I was always manipulating and controlling and um, moving parts around and organizing and you know. But um, so my mis 
mentor was sweet to reveal to me that the lie behind that was that I, I just really felt like I couldn't trust the Lord. Basically, I didn't trust God enough. And so, um, so that's the truth. So the lie was that I have to, I have to do these things or they will not turn out well. So it's just a simple way of just processing. Um, and for me, honestly, when I was going through that, I did not see that. I did not know that. I did not know that was why. So simple truth, but I missed it. And it's because it was happening to me. So A good verse to capture this idea is 2 Corinthians 10.5. It says, we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. I mean, this is helping people find some thoughts, taking them captive, making them obedient to Christ. Um, I'm going to keep going here. More about sinful patterns. Yeah, this is, uh, this is the char- listed character defects at the end. We asked you to review that at the beginning you know, in, prepare- in preparation. But um, using the notes you've, ma- uh, you've made, help the mentee discover patterns and themes, address and renounce sinful patterns. And you're going to page 83. And um, and pages 108 through 110. What's on 83? Mm, it talks about dis- discovering character defects in your mentee's okay. life. All right. And then the, um, the chart or the list is on Appendix E. Okay, good. So um, keep in mind, this is a much less amount of information. This was all, again, packed into the f- one week, but now we're in the second week of uh, week 8B. Um, and then uh, renouncing lies, vows, and sinful patterns on pages 82 and 83 of your Steps Mentor Guide. This is all, you know, chron- straight from your book, basically. So you're going to go through that. Um, any comments on this? Basically, you've just dug up a whole bunch of yucky stuff. And you've just revealed patterns um, and themes and ways of life apart from God, and basically what you want to do now is bring that to the Lord in prayer. Um, yeah. So you're asking for God's blessing and healing on their life. And so it's an important step. You don't want to miss the prayer part because um, basically we can only change with God's help. Yeah. Um, and so otherwise you're, they stay stuck if we don't bring it before the Lord. We've just given them a whole bunch of information, but we haven't helped uh, – with it spiritually yeah so, yeah um so from here in your mentor books it goes into different <laughs> prayers and um you know we have matthew 7 up here just god is a he answers our prayers he, he gives good gifts to those who ask and um and so on the same week pages 84 and 85 you've got these great prayers healing and blessing and um so sp- spend time praying about the most important area um, a stronghold or addiction, a renouncing a lie that they've believed, your discernment, particular to your mentee, is going to be what, how, how you're led in that. Look ahead. Don't try to figure it out in front of them. That's going to be key, like I'm doing right now. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, and then if you have time, if you feel led, the going deeper questions from week eight are rich. They're really good. So if you have time, go through that with your, with your guy or your, with your mentee. And if you even want, this has happened a lot where I have some, I'm meeting with someone and they don't have a whole lot of like amends that need to be made with people. Like a lot of their stuff is just kind of a, an internal struggle that they're dealing with. You could save the going deeper questions from week eight and squeeze more juice out of week eight the next time you meet. Because you're going to find for some people, if there's not a whole lot to do as, as far as, you know, going and, and amending other relationships, they might not have a whole lot to cover in those last few weeks. So um, the going deeper questions, though, are really good from this section. Questions, because I think uh, we're done with phase four. Week eight is done. Everything we've been talking about for the past 45 minutes <laughs> is supposed to be covered in one meeting. It's just impossible. All right. I, the fact that there are no questions makes me wonder, if, is this just totally clear? Or are you totally confused? It's, it's one or the other. Just adding to the confusion. Yeah. Um, now we want to encourage to faithful action. Beginning November 15th, which is technically like week nine for them. It's like it, it's, 
week nine, step nine, whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> um, this is love that we walk in obedience to his commands. As you've heard from the beginning, his command is that you walk in love. So how do we walk in love? That um, starts by peacemaking. So you are going to cover, like you've done in weeks one through four, I'm going to cover going deeper questions, but because we um, doubled up on weeks eight, uh, you know, and, and spread that out, you're going to cover two weeks, weeks nine and ten, the next time you meet. It'll feel like a piece of cake after week eight. Um, you also want to review, um, uh, or the, actually, peacemaking parts one and two, review the weeks nine and ten and going deeper. And the questions on pages 94 and 96 in your step mentor guide, is that basically just, that's it. I was thinking you were so they're creating like, the action plan, that's the next time? Um, no, oh, they've already done that. Group. They do it in their groups. Yeah, they're done with that. <clears throat> this is part of that same week. Yeah. And then, um, this is the same week? Okay. Uh, you, you had some great, great comments about this. Um, I think it's down here. Um, Wait. Yeah, it is on here. Yeah, it's on here somewhere. You can see it at the bottom of the page. The I think there. Yeah, that's right. And this is what it looks like. And down here it says, to whom, for what, are you willing to make amends? Um, so, so there's a actually, challenge to yeah, do it. That's day six, I believe, of their week, of their Bible study week. Um, so they actually are making this list, and I think what's kind of been lacking in the past is we don't have any, haven't given y'all any direction on what to do with this list. Um, I think you guys have been faithful to say, yeah, make the amends, that's part of the process, but um, we just want to give you a little bit more information about this is in your book, how to make an amend, um, sharing that with them, talking through it, talking through that list, not shying away from that list, but just digging in deeper. Um, this is such an important part um, that I think we want to add to the curriculum a little bit and maybe walk them through one amend. Um, yes. That's on the next Weeks slide. 9, 10, and 11, uh, the, the last four weeks have lagged in the past. Mm -hmm. And I think it's probably because. Probably getting tired and maybe getting lazy or whatever it might be. So doing this and just trying to pick one, at least one, one. person mm -hmm. to, to, to do this with will be very powerful. Next slide. Yes. So um, they're asked to make a list. Um, and then, so go over the list with them. Make a plan for making at least one amend during drive. Ask them to write out their amend and share it with you next week before they take any action. So basically, we're really asking them to get into action. Mm -hmm. Write out the amend. These are going to be clear ones, like if they're married, maybe their spouse, the person that is closest to them um, that would their relationships would benefit the most. We're not asking them to do anything hard yet. We just want them to walk through one so they understand the process. Um, they're not going to get through all of them. Yeah. Um, in the traditional, if you were doing these steps in a secular uh, step, you know, environment, step nine is going to take three or four months. You stay in step nine until you finish your amends process. So we're rushing through the steps here. Um, we're gonna. We just want them to get a feel for how to do one and do it well. And they're they're walking closely with you, so you can give them advice. You can say, mm -hmm, maybe leave that part out. Um, you know, when they're reading it to you, that might or be sensitive to that. Might be hurtful when you say that. Or you know, we want to really we want to work on those a. Uh, yeah, the, the, the A's. Uh, this is from the Peacemaker. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to, we really want them to uh, make sure that they're not using any blaming statements. You know, if you hadn't done this, I wouldn't have. We're, we're really asking them to stay on their own side of the street and clean up, you know, take responsibility. That's why we went through all that work. I would say most people go through their lives never experiencing this. I, I think I, I hope that's. I'm afraid that's true. Mm -hmm. 
A uh, few people really know how to apologize well, how to take ownership without getting in a zinger. You know, they're saying, like, I'm sorry, but, and then they excuse themselves, I'm sorry if you're offended. Um, and, and it just, this is, there's a great opportunity to teach a life skill that will save marriages, will save relationships. And so there is some great, for, this is what makes re-engage so powerful, is it's this, this is at the heart of it. And, but you don't necessarily, and if you, you get to teach them with that person that they have a hard time uh, forgiving or whatever. It's so it's a great opportunity. Um, <clears throat> uh, what was I going to say? Uh, mm, there's something. Something was there. I think also, Brian, you just touched on that, and it made me think about not having a response <coughs> to. Um, so perhaps they read their amend to their spouse, and um, hopefully you've cra- you've helped them craft it where it is going to go well. Yeah. to be well received, but also not not get into a zinger. It's this is not a time to discuss it or bring it back. It's just I just need to share this with you. It's on my heart and I really want to seek your forgiveness in this. And if you can't forgive me, I totally understand. I will wait. I you know, I accept mm-hmm. that. Um, it's about humility and you know Yeah. Um, I, I I've got a real simple example of how it's helped in my marriage. Uh Brandy, Brandy and I were going head to head. It was like repeated on a weekend where it's like in every attempt to reconcile led to another round. <laughs> and um, I remember Greg had said something about we always focus on our pain and their sin. The other person's <laughs> sin and our pain. That's just natural. It's our default. So he said, but we got to flip that. We're supposed to focus on my sin and their pain. And I was crystal clear what Brandy was doing wrong and, you know, how it was making me miserable or whatever. But I took a piece of paper and wrote on the top, my sin. On the back, I wrote Brandy's pain. And I started listing out the things from that particular weekend. And when I listed it, it, the things came up for me, like, what have I done? And I keep it limited to that. I've I've raised my voice a number of times. I've interrupted Brandy. I've misinterpreted things that she said. I I was being defensive, all this other stuff. Um... And did I still think that she started it when I'm writing that? Yeah, you know, like, st- it's, still, it's still there, right? But I'm supposed to focus on my, the log in my eye, right? And then I turn it over and what's Brandy's pain? Well, it's got to be frustrating to be misinterpreted, to feel like you have to walk on eggshells with your husband when you have three kids and then you have a fourth child on the weekends, you know? <laughs> and um, just I wrote down the things. It's like, this has got to be frustrating. And as I'm writing it down, I'm feeling empathy for her. Like, this kind of stink for her, but... Um, that was clarifying when I went home, uh, and I said, can I talk to you, honey? And she paused Grey's Anatomy. (laughs) (laughs) And, and I read to her, you know, honey, yeah, I know. That's not a secret. I actually watch it with her. So, um, and I read, I said, honey, I've done this and, you know, I want to apologize for this and this and this. And I read it and I turned the page over and she probably thought this is where he's going to say, but you. Right, but I said, and it's got to be hard to put up with being misinterpreted a lot, and it's got to be hard to go through this and this and this. And I want to ask for your forgiveness. And she looked at me and she goes, "Well, you certainly hit the nail on the head." <laughs> and then she left the room and came back five minutes later in tears and said, and and humbled herself as well. And I, but okay, I cannot do that. That's that's the Holy Spirit. I don't think had I been taught how to do that. That, that format was very simple for me. And, but, but like acknowledging the hurt is something very hard for people to do. Like what I did, how it hurt you, is getting even more vulnerable. Because I'm putting myself, you know, I'm not just saying I did wrong, but I hurt you this way. And I, I think, and, and I might have missed some stuff. So this is really rich stuff. I'm glad we're slowing down on it. Because in the past, we've kind of allowed ourselves to fly by it. And I think it's sort of like... Um, Running a marathon and then just kind of stopping like a, like a hundred yards away from the finish line. Exactly. <clears throat> okay. More about peacemaking. Have you, have you already read this? Um, just the last part. I'll just emphasize pray. Okay. Pray with them. Pray for them while they're making it. Um, ask them to pray. Um, and then also just, just the last thing is maybe this is something you do in a later week to kind of look at that list and go, hey, when do you think you could make this amend? You know, and 
like, let's kind of schedule these out because this is not all going to be done in December, guys. They're going to be really busy in December. So uh, yeah. what does the next spring look like and how does this one, you know, and it's really about the timing is the Lord. Um, but so probably need, we've got need to give some cautionary. Action. Yeah. yeah. We want to be cautionary, uh, give uh, warnings about, you don't want, you want to encourage people to make amends uh, with, don't start with like someone who's really hurt them or like, they, they put them in danger or you know there's certain people we, we don't want to lay this expectation to make amends with the person who abused them uh, growing up yeah. start with some also the people who are they, they're going to experience success yeah. in you know doing that and the other thing uh, be careful of, I, I want to make amends with my ex-girlfriend you know <laughs> okay, just some stuff to be aware of um, of course you want to make amends with your ex-girlfriend, right? Um, okay. Wisdom. Yeah, just use wisdom. And again, ask us if you have questions. I have a question real quick on that. Do you specify that this needs to be done person to person, that the amend is not, you need to write a letter?